Welcome back, everybody, to another Code Peterson tutorial, another GB Studio demonstration. Graywick messaged the other day and asked if I had or was aware of Gremlins 2 for the original Nintendo. And there's like, it's a top down 2D style game, but there are platforming elements where, like, if you could just fall into a hole or whatever. So sometimes you need to jump over obstacles or traps or different kinds of hazards in the game and i thought you know what that is a great idea a great suggestion because that's something i want to incorporate uh, to a game idea that i have so i thought this would be a good way to help someone else troubleshoot something and also help myself uh, with a possible solution to this also this was kind of tricky uh, so to begin with i do have a scene on here and this is just one scene. I just made this a little demonstration map. And as you can see, there's a border around the outside uh, that I put on there, just solid walls or whatever you want it to be so you can leave through that. And then on here, this is just part of my tile map. So it's like a, maybe it's water, maybe it's lava or, or a hole or something. And here the hole is very wide. And then here the hole is narrow. So maybe I would have like an exit or something I need to get to up here and my characters down here. Now, if I take a look at the sprites, I only added one sprite to this game and it is a four direction and movement. And I did choose the option to flip right to create the left facing frames. And it is just a simple cube, but it's 16 by 16, but I made it smaller to fit in there and the background's transparent and I just added a shadow. So basically there's two kinds of animation states. There's the default, which gives me my idle right, my idle up and idle down. As you can see here on all three of those, it's just that stationary square. And then when it's moving right, moving up and moving down, it's the same thing. It's just moving that way. Depending on how you want your character to look, you know, you might have somebody walking or whatever. This is just what I used uh, to kind of make sense of this. And I can always replace those sprites later if I need to. Then I went down here and I went to add a another animation state by just clicking this little plus button here. And then I right clicked on it and renamed it. And I called this one jump. And this one, I did the same thing. I have idle right, idle up, idle down, moving right, moving up, moving down. But as you could see with my sprite here, it's divided up into four pictures. So the first frame, when I want the animation to start, that's what it normally looks like. But then it goes with a little space between the character and the shadow and then a bigger space and then the biggest space and then it starts going back down uh, until it lands so that is the exact same animation that i have for idle right idle up idle down moving right moving up moving down and then of course it just flips it um, to do the left facing frames which it doesn't matter if it does or not because it's just a cube on there. So it, it looks the same anyway. That's the sprite work. Okay, so for the scene here, I basically have, you know, this area here. And I added a trigger over this obstacle that we want to move around. So here, I because it's not the same size on all areas, I did add to, I had to use two triggers on there. And if you don't know how to add triggers, you just go over to the plus and you add a trigger, and then you can just click and drag, and added another one and clicked and drag. But because those are two different sizes, I had to use two different triggers. It's okay, but um, that is on there. And then on this trigger for both of these, they both behave the same way. On enter, I created a global variable and then I just renamed it and I called it hazard. So when I enter the trigger here, this hazard variable gets a value of true. 
And then when I leave it, my hazard variable, it's a value of false. And then the same with this one over here. When I enter it, it's a value of true. Then it gets a value of false. That's the first thing I wanted to do. Now, you could have it to where when you land on this, it'll move you to the beginning. But then I couldn't get this script to work the way I wanted to. So this is kind of a goofy way to do it and probably not the most efficient way uh, without having to use some kind of a script or whatever. Uh, but if we're just trying to use the GB Studio already built in options, this I think is the only way that you can do it. And if somebody has a different way, be sure to let us know in the comments and help us out. Uh, so that's the first part. Okay, that's all we have for those triggers. Now for the level itself, I did add a script and I did the old on press of a button, attach script to button basically is what it was. And so it says on press, when I'm pressing the A button and it's gonna override the default button action, it is going to set the player animation speed to five. And then it is going to set another global variable, which I called this one jump, and it's going to set it equal to true. Okay, so I went down to global variables and then I just renamed it instead of it being global variable zero or global variable one, I changed it to jump. And then right after that, still in that attaching script to button. It is going to change the animation state to jump. Remember, we had default where it was standing still, and then we have jump where it's playing the animation. And I unchecked loop animation. I don't want it to loop. I just want it to go through once. All right, now this is a, a number I'll probably have to play around with to make to get it to where everything's perfect. But I said wait for 0 0.8 seconds because that kind of gives me enough time to go through the animation because once the animation is done and the character is landed on the ground, I then want to set the animation back to default so that my player's not jumping every time I move. I just want them to, to move normally. Okay, then after that, I went jump is equal to false. So basically, the variable says jump is true. The character jumps and then 0.8 seconds later, then the animation state goes back to default. And then our variable goes from jumping true to jumping false because supposedly the character is on the ground. And then after that, I have on here, I think I can actually remove this player start on update script. So I will I will delete that out of there. That was something else I was playing around with and I don't think it impacted it at all. We'll find out. So that is the first part of this. Okay, now what I wanted to do, and I tried to put this in the script for the triggers and I tried to put it in the script down here at the bottom and I couldn't get it to work. But I was like, if that means if I collide into this, I want to start back at the beginning, or if I collide into this, I want to go back to the beginning. But then if my character is jumping, I want to be able to enter this area without going back to the beginning. But on the other hand, if I land in here, I also want to leave. So when I tried to put that in here, for example, with the with the triggers, here it just says on enter. So when I would jump in there, even though jump was true and I entered in there and it was allowing me to do that, I would land in here and then jump was false, but I had already entered in here. There was never another opportunity uh, for this to enter back in. It would still let me move in here. Now, if I was in this area, and I moved over here, then it would move me back there. If I landed in here and then I moved over here, or if I walked out and then walked back in, then it would move me to the beginning again. So I needed to have some kind of way where this is always checking to see 
if A, I'm in this area or this area, and B, if I am jumping or not. I tried it in here on this on in it, wouldn't work with that either. Uh, just was really throwing me for a loop. But then I thought, you know what? Let's add an actor. This and this is why it's not the most efficient way because on GB Studio we always want to limit the amount of actors that we have in the game. Uh, but I did put an actor, just the default one up here. And on here, in this area here, for on in it for this actor, I have hide self. So it's here. It's out just out in this border area where it'll never come into contact with anything and it doesn't do anything else. But right on the start, when this level is initiated, then it is going to be invisible and we're just never going to see it. But I want it here because then we have this on update option. So when I came over here, then I could use say if variable is equal to value. And I said if hazard is equal to equal to true. And then inside that, I said if jump is equal to equal to false. And then underneath that, I have set the player position to 313, which is where it starts. And there is an else there, but we don't need it. If you want to, we could just go there and, and disable else, but I'm not going to worry about it for right now, just in case I do want to change something later. So that is what's going to happen here, if I explain that. Hopefully, I kind of explained that thoroughly. So now, let's see what that looks like. We'll run this program, and here's our character. We're moving around. If I jump with the A button, which is Z, see we just have this kind of basic animation and I can do that while I'm moving around some of it gets just a little kind of glitchy with it but I think some of that is with the timing and everything but it does work pretty good if I go up here to this area then it moves me back down to the beginning which is what I want. I'll go over here and it moves me to the beginning again. All right, now the reason why that's happening is because when I enter this, hazard is true, but jump was false. And when hazard's true and jump is false, it's going to move me back to the beginning. If I jump in there, then the same thing happens because the moment that I land, then it can immediately detect that jump is no longer true, it's false, and then also hazard is true. It would be kind of cool, now that I think about it, if this was water, for example, if it triggered another animation of this and I made an animation of a splash, and then it landed in there, played the splash, and then it moved it back to the to the beginning. But it works for this and you know however you want that to look. Now, if I go over here and I jump over the be the top of that, then I never land in that to have it be false while, while this hazard is true. So it jumps over the top of it. But if I go over here and I jump and I land in there, then it takes me back to the beginning. So hopefully that's something to at least kind of get you started with that. Uh, you could have these be much bigger levels and you could have little things that you want to land on to get from one end to the other. And this is obviously very basic, and but hopefully it's something that you can build of. And hopefully Greywick it helps you out with your, with your game and I, I think this is definitely going to help me out with mine also. So appreciate that suggestion for a tutorial. I appreciate the challenge that it presented too. That was actually a lot of fun to play around with. And again, if any of you out there came up with a better idea or a different solution, be sure to let us know uh, so we can keep learning more together. Appreciate y'all watching and we'll catch you on another video down the road.